In this video, I'll be giving a full detailed installation of the track spec hood vents for a Type R. And I say Type R because I'm putting these on my SI and the Type R hood is a little bit wider and it has the hood scoop. So there was a little bit unknown with this install, but as you'll see at the end, it seems to work out pretty well. At the end of the video, I will give a brief review, some of my thoughts, the plans for the future of this channel, about the functionality of hood vents, and just a little bit of general information. So I'll probably have timestamps at the end of the video if you want to jump around. Anyways, let's get right into the install. The initial presentation of these is really good. The quality looks good. The welds are good. The finish is good. It comes with these templates that make it really easy. It gives you letters that go hand in hand with the directions to show you where the template goes. There's a line you cut across, and then there's these holes for the rivets. Just really easy to work out. Here's a look at the rivets and rivets are what you'd want to use for something like this. The Type R kit comes with two different sizes, and it also comes with these washers that you put underneath the rivet when you are installing it. The kit also comes with instructions, which is always nice. There are colored pictures. It tells you what's included, the tools you need. It gives you a really detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to install these, and I believe they are specific to every single kit that track spec sells, so it's really nice to see. First step on my car at least is to remove this sort of cover that's under the hood. Really simple, just three Christmas tree style clips. They are one time use, so they will get destroyed when you take them out. First thing we're doing here is setting up the template for the center vent. I also wanted to check and make sure it wouldn't come into contact with my aftermarket turbo inlet pipe, which it does not. So anyone with the 271 intake, it will not hit that, you don't have to worry. And what we're doing is measuring the horizontal line to see how far back we want the vent to be. And then we're also measuring a vertical center line. So just make sure you find two parts of the hood that you can measure consistently. And throughout this whole video, main rule you want to apply is measure twice, cut once. Because last thing you want to do is start cutting into your hood and then you can't put it back. Here you have the center template taped down. Again, just behind the horizontal line and in the center of the vertical line. And then there's some extra tape around there to protect the paint. Now we're measuring out the side vents. And I believe we measured one and a half inches from this center crease. So again, it's just a matter of finding lines that you can consistently measure from. Here are the side vents and center vent tape down. Again, there's extra tape around it to help stabilize the saw and make it easier to cut. Now we start drilling here just as a way of getting the saw blade started. So drill it out just enough so that there's room. Once there's enough room, start cutting with the air saw here and simply just following the stencil, going along the edges until we get a clean cutout. Now it's important to note that the hood is multiple layers and you only wanna cut through one layer at a time or else it'll be a mess and it'll be very difficult. Here, I'm then vacuuming out all the metal shavings so they don't make a mess and they don't rust. So make sure you vacuum that, quick test fit, and then here, straight back to cutting in the center. Here's another look at the second layer, but this time in the center of the hood. Again, make sure you cut through one layer at a time or else it'll be much more difficult. So now that the first layer was cut out, here, start cutting the second layer. Again, just as before, cut around the edges, very simple cutting out the second half of the template here. And then again, using that drill technique to kind of get around those edges and get the drill bit or the uh, saw blade started. Here, about to take off the hood. So now disconnecting the windshield washer line, very simple, just pull it out. And then it's four bolts and that's all that holds it in. You're gonna need two people for this. Here, we take the hood off, place it on a horse. For the side vents, we did something a little different. Rather than completely cut out that second layer and potentially structurally compromise the hood, we drilled holes in it so that it's a bit of a compromise in the sense that it allows for airflow and the vents will be functional, but you're not completely losing the structural rigidity that having more metal in there would provide. Once everything is cut, the next step is going to be to start prepping for paint. So here we're using a Scotch-Brite pad to just roughly scuff the surface so that the paint has something to stick to. And then after this, you're gonna see, we'll start sanding it, getting any rough edges and major burrs off. 
what the paint is going to do is a few things. One of them is going to be protecting it from any rust. And then another is also an aesthetic purpose. So if you were to look through the vent without any paint, you would just see this ugly brown body color. So having the paint, if you look through it, you'll see black and it'll just look better. Now everything is scuffed. We are masking it off because we want to make sure we only paint the parts that we want to paint and not actually paint over the body color of the car. Coming around to the top side here, this technique you see is used to push down the tape just slightly so that the tape isn't sticking to the edges of the metal and it gives you a little bit more coverage. So rather than the tape covering the metal, you have more paint sticking to it. Masking off those final edges there and then following up with a little bit of scotch bright on the top surface, making sure everything is scuffed that is getting painted. On top of that, there's this blue plastic sheet we use and this will cover the majority of the rest of the hood. And then this is a look at what is actually getting painted. The very last step before applying primer is to clean it off with a little bit of grease remover. And when I say primer, I mean a very, very light coat. So just one light coat of primer and then following that is a couple coats of just a generic black spray paint. Here's a look at the final product with the paint completely dry. Here you can see what I meant now by when you look through the vent, you see the black instead of the body color. For this next part, you're going to have to realign your vents. By that, I mean when you cut the holes, there's probably a little bit of play in the actual cutout. So you want to put the vent in, make sure it fits, and then remeasure it and make sure it's centered with where you had it earlier. From that point, tape it down, and then you can start drilling holes for your rivets and putting in the rivets as you go. With a little bit of touch up paint on the holes that were just drilled, we can finally start putting in the rivets. And you'll notice here I'm using an air gun, which most people probably don't have, but a standard handheld rivet gun will work just fine. Some of the washers turned out to be pretty difficult to hold on there, so we ended up flipping it over, holding the washer from the top, and then putting in the rivets from the bottom. After repeating those last few steps, all three vents are on, and this is a look at the final product. As you can see, all the rivets are in, everything is painted, and it's good to go back on the car. The hood goes back on in the reverse order it came off. Four bolts, reconnect the line, and then we're just going to touch up some of these holes that were drilled, and that's it. Otherwise, enjoy the montage. All right, let's talk. First thing I want to say, this video came out a little bit later than I expected. One of the things I was waiting on was this little mic. Uh, doesn't seem to be the best, but it's way better than the iPhone. So it's something. I'm starting to try and get better equipment for the channel. I also had a fever for a couple days, and I feel like I'm saying that every video. I don't know why. I'm always getting sick, but better now. And this also was somewhat of a more complicated install. Obviously, it was a bit of a procedure, and it took basically a full day. Uh, got there maybe 9.30, finished at 3 in the afternoon. So, you know, it takes a decent amount of time. A lot of it is just tedious measuring and little time-consuming tasks. What are my overall thoughts on TrackSpec? I thought it was great, and it is something I'd recommend. The hardware was great. The product was great. The instructions are great. And it was overall a really pleasant experience. What hood vents will do is they allow heat and air to escape, pretty simply put. And it's also a styling component. But they are very, very functional, especially on the 10th gens. 
the center one especially is placed directly above the engine, the turbo, and the intake. So you'll get cooler intake temps, it'll keep your engine temps down, and it's just keeping everything in there cooler. What it's also doing is it's allowing air to escape because a lot of pressure builds up under your hood and the air can't get out. So by allowing the air to escape, it can actually create a little bit of downforce. Something else I want to compare this to is the common alternative of switching your hood. I've actually never seen somebody put track spec vents on their Type R, let alone an SI, because most people would just change the hood. They go with commonly carbon fiber vented hood because it's, it's easy. You're just simply, again, those four bolts, take them off, put the new hood on. The reason I went with the track spec vents instead of completely changing my hood, one of them is the price, right? You're paying a third of the price for the hood vents, uh, whereas, you know, a whole hood itself is going to be a lot more money. Another thing is that just the unique factor, because I never see anybody do hood vents and I have the skills and, and the equipment at a body shop to be able to do the install myself. So I figured, hey, why not save some money and do something different? One concern I had, and I'm sure many other people did, is what happens when it rains. Because the center vent is right above the plugs, it's right above a lot of the vital components and electronics. What do you do when it rains? Simple solution I found. I have these magnetic number decals, throw them right over it. Problem solved. Here's some other updates with the car. Since I removed the front mud flaps from my side skirts, I figured why not remove the rear? So recently I removed my rear mud flaps and it gives it a little bit more tire poke and it looks a little better overall. It's a bit more of an aggressive look. Yes, the rock chips are going to be everywhere, but I've kind of accepted it at this point. Another thing is I brought my wing up about maybe three inches because it is adjustable and the position it was at before was pretty neutral to be honest. So at this point, It'll be a little more aggressive and it will actually have a lot more downforce to it. One major issue I've been having with the wing is that it's starting to peel. And this is common on almost all carbon fiber. I got this wing used and it sits in the sun. I don't know how old it is. Most wings have this issue because they are covered in resin and not clear coat. Resin breaks down faster and hence you get this peeling. It is also the reason why it starts to turn yellow over time. You can see here the bottom of my wing is this nice black and then the top of it that sits in the sun turned yellow. However, in the couple days I spent editing this video, I actually got the wing re-cleared and it's now back on the car, nice and shiny. Still a little bit of a yellow tinge to it, but it looks pretty good for the most part. It is still January, meaning that it's cold and there's not much going on. So basically just waiting till the track events start up and all the fun events start going on again. But I do have a little bit more building to do. I've been wanting to do a rear diffuser for so long and I'm just trying to plan that out. Another thing is I have brakes, but I'm going to be putting those on a little bit later because I'm not going to be putting on track brakes if I'm still just driving through the winter. So those will be coming up at some point and somebody asked me a question about the Brembo's uh, the big brake kit. So I'll probably go into depth about that too, because the two questions I get most about my car are probably the big brakes and the wing, because, well, the least amount of people do that. And it's also more custom and intricate, but I'll go over that in the future. Anyways, subscribe if you want to keep updated on my car and are interested in track and cool car content. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.